Brompton processors benefit from a wide variety of different parameters that you can control, each of which can affect the output of your video to the screen. These range from simple parameters or handles like intensity of the output to more specific controls like red, green, blue, shadow and highlight on the incoming video feeds. Keeping track of and recreating specific combinations of values for particular looks or setups can be time consuming. Using presets can help you store and recall these combinations of settings easily as well as making the use of remote triggers much more effective. There are three types of presets you can record on the processor. Colour, which records different settings on the colour button. An example, you could have a daytime and a nighttime setting for your screen with different colour balances and intensities. Position. This records the position of your panels on the canvas. As an example, by moving the position of the panels in the canvas to a different part of the incoming image, you can get different content onto the panels without changing the incoming signal. This is one way of creating a simple switcher within a single video feed using different regions of interest. Image. The third type of preset controls which input is used and how the various inputs are scaled and colour corrected as they come into the processor. When you have recorded a set of presets, it's possible to switch between them by double clicking. I have already recorded some which you can see I am switching between. We will start by recording a few colour presets. Click on the record button at the bottom and ensure only the colour mask is selected. Our first preset will be an intensity reduction of our screen to 50%, so we will adjust the intensity slider. The next preset we will record is a default state, in case you need to quickly return to it. Select the colour button in the pipeline and set everything to 100%. Click the record button and click the next preset button that's available. Finally, right click on each recorded preset and select rename. I'll call the first one 50% intensity and the second one default state. You can now switch between the two presets by double clicking on the preset button you have just recorded. Position presets are slightly different as they work with fixture groups. Before we start, select the panels you want to use and put them into a group. Now click the record button and make sure the position mask is selected. Select the group of fixtures you want to record this information for and click a preset button. Move your panels to a different position, click the record button and make sure they are selected and click another free preset. Rename them to something appropriate and switch between them by double clicking. Finally, there are image presets which cover processor inputs and how they are handled. A useful set of presets is to record the different inputs your processor is using and how this is scaled to your panels. For example, on an SX40 you may have a HDMI input which is 1080p and a 4K 12G SDI input, both of which have to be displayed on the same size video wall. Select the first input by double clicking on the pipeline. Scale the content to your panels. Now press the record button and make sure the correct image mask is selected. And again, click a preset button. Do the same for the second input. Double click on this first and then scale the content to your panels. You may also want to change some of the properties in the sidebar for each input. For example, you may wish to apply a small amount of black level crush to one or other of the inputs, and this can also be stored using a preset. Rename all your presets so that the names are clear as things can get confusing as your presets build up. You can see which attributes are affected by a preset by looking at the icons displayed in the corner of each button. Presets are a useful feature to quickly control different states of your processor and are helpful when you want to store settings you may later need to return to. 
We will cover presets more when we look at live control in a later video. See you in the next tutorial.